naked for the first time with someone new, and I am terrified. My heart is pounding. My mind is racing with a million questions that I know I can't ask out loud. Like, will they see my cellulite as a flaw? Or more accurately, a physical guarantee that I am a great dinner companion. <laughs> am I going to have to clarify that this entire area needs maintenance? I mean, shouldn't that be a reasonable expectation going in? What is a thigh gap, and why the fuck am I supposed to have one? I mean, that is a place where my legs necessarily come together. Why would there be a gap? Anyway, what I'm really trying to say is I always get a little nervous my first time with a new waxer. <laughs> with the right person, the waxer-waxy relationship can be amazing. There is a closeness that can really only come from letting someone ladle hot wax onto your nether regions and rip your most intimate hair out by the roots. <laughs> Hell, I've had years-long relationships with women who don't know my last name but could pick my vulva out of a lineup. <laughs> For those of you who've never been to a waxer, this might be hard to imagine. But just like a first date, there is a lot that can make it a good or terrible experience. Will my waxer opt for small talk or let me sit in my preferred nervous silence? Will they make sure the wax is hot enough but not too hot? Will they be gentle with me? But I'm not thinking about any of these things today while I take my pants off and wait for my new waxer. Instead, I'm cringing as I look at the thick swaths of pale raised scar tissue that crisscross my upper thighs. And I'm wondering the same thing I always wonder when someone new sees them. Will they ask about them? And what will I say? I'm not surprised or offended that people ask. It's a natural reaction. But there's a reason I haven't worn a bikini in 10 years. It's not a conversation I want to have all the time. I used to resent this. Imagine if that poor decision that you made as a teenager was permanently engraved in your skin. The cheap hair straightener that caused my head to smell so strongly of burning hair, my homeroom teacher asked if someone was smoking. The heavy makeup that would have looked decent at a drag show, but was questionable for the first day of seventh grade. <laughs> my choice to perform my final paper in my ninth grade government class as a medley of rewritten songs from the musical Rent, even though A, that wasn't an option, <laughs> B, I had zero musical talent, and C, my class was made up of football players whose only musical theater experience was a touchdown celebration dance. I now understand that cutting wasn't the same as any ill-advised teenage fashion choice, but back then I couldn't help but judge it like everybody else seemed to. It wasn't mentioned on the front pages of Teen Vogue like an eating disorder. It wasn't as commonplace as your garden variety depression or anxiety. In terms of social acceptance, cutting ranked a few notches below seasonal affective disorder. The first night that I ever cut, I started with my left arm. I opened up his scissors and used one blade to saw into the skin on the top of my forearm. Blood pooled in the deepening groove, and the stinging pain soothed a fire deep within me that had been building for years, but that I didn't know how to fight. The next day, I strategically placed two fuzzy wristbands on that arm. I knew then what people thought of cutters, that they do it for attention. I was not going to be that person. At lunch, my friend Melissa made a joke about the wristbands. What, did you try to kill yourself or something? And she shoved the wristband aside before I could stop her. I can't remember what excuse I made for the bright red lines that had only barely begun to heal, but I know that nobody believed it. I've always been shitty at coming up with lies for these scars. They tell their own story far too clearly. The first time I ever got waxed, I went with a college friend who convinced me to give it a try. Arena was beautiful and cool. She had a fake ID. She introduced me to a lot of new things I had never tried before. Some bad, some good. In fact, for just about every good thing, there was a bad thing. <laughs> Drinking Kharkov vodka out of a water bottle straight, I only had to try once before realizing it wasn't great advice. <laughs> but waxing was actually way easier, quicker, caused less irritation than any other method of hair removal. I was sold. Irina took me to her waxer the first time I went and waited for me in the waiting room. Julie, my waxer, took her time explaining what to expect. Once I was ready to get started, she drew back the sheet from my legs and her perfectly painted red mouth dropped when she saw my years-old scars. I slammed the card around my legs. 
The words rushed out of my mouth before I could stop them or realize how little sense they made. Really? Julie asked while shaking her head. I nodded and prayed that Arena couldn't hear us from the other room. Later that week, I asked my therapist about the situation. It's been years since I was at a place where I cut to cope with things. Is it wrong that I still lie about it? There is no simple right or wrong answer in this situation, she said. Classic bullshit therapist trick to sound wise when they're just not answering your question. <laughs> but just make sure you know the answer to this question. Are you being honest with yourself? So I'm still waiting for my new waxer to come into the room. Now that I've disrobed, I climb onto the waxing table awkwardly and lie atop a sheet of what looks like deli paper. Why do they have to use deli paper anyway? I mean, I already feel a mild guilt that some part of my feminist identity is being stripped off along with my pubic hair. Do I have to be made to feel like a piece of meat in the process? The door creaks open. My heart pounds to keep up with the pace at which my brain is scrambling in a last ditch effort to come up with a decent lie. Why is this still so hard for me? If I'm being honest, when someone asks, I really want to say, I didn't want attention, I just needed help. It seems pretty defensive for a first date with a new waxer, though. The door is opening. A woman with long black hair pulled back into a high ponytail walks in the room carrying a bucket of waxing equipment. Hi, I'm Sapani. We're doing a Brazilian today, right, Katie? That's right, the whole enchilada. Or in this case, I guess maybe it'd be the whole taco, I don't know. <laughs> okay, gotcha. I can tell she's weirded out at my nervous attempt at humor, probably just thinks it's my first time getting waxed. Well, I've got the wax all ready to go, so if you want to take off the sheet, we can get started. Okay. I've been clinging to the top sheet with a death grip. I reluctantly lift it off. Sapani turns to me with a tiny bowl of wax. My eyes are glued to the ceramic bowl. It has at least seven cracks. <gasps> she lets out a tiny gasp. What happened here, hon? Um, I used to get really down, but it's okay. I'm doing, I'm doing well now. Sapani is spectacularly unfazed. No confusion, no disgust, no concerned judgment. All business, she lifts up the waxing stick and steps toward me. Gotcha. Well, should we start with the butthole? <laughs> Give it up for Katie Schmitter, everybody.